Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to learn how to make this beautiful dress with an overlap neckline, a collar and a pleated skirt. We are going to learn how to draft the skirt pattern first. Then for the top, we are going to do a freehand cutting for the top. Then for the sleeve, I don't want to make a shirt sleeve on my gown. I don't, I'm not a fan of shirts shirt sleeve in particular i love this sleeve so i tell her to add this sleeve to it so we are going to learn how to do our slashing and spreading for the skirt you can see the side of the skirt the skirt has an overlap the top has an overlap and it has a collar and for the collar we are using a one-piece collar i don't know if you know how to draft a one-piece collar but we are going to be using a one-piece collar for this tutorial now we start our drafting our skirt drafting and after drafting the skirt then we will cut our top and then we will sew here is the pattern paper that i will be needing for this for the skirt part i will draft my back pattern first this dress has a zipper at the side the zipper of this skirt of this gown is at the side sorry it is not at the back that means our skirts will not have any zipper allowance i will draft my back part then after drafting the back i will use it to cut out the front and for my paper i will be drafting my paper on fold it will make things easier whenever you are drafting an overlap skirt or shirt or top you should fold your paper on your fabric before you start drafting Drafting. Now I will take out my half length. My half length is 16 inches, and from that 16 inches, I will draft my hip line. After my hip line, I will draft the full length. I want to make the full length of this dress 36, and I'm leaving it at 36 inches for now. Later, I will add my hemming allowance. Then, right now, I'll go ahead and draw a line at the hip line at the full length i'll also lab label my waistline so that we will not get confused after doing this we will start taking our waist measurement our hip measurements and our full length for now if you are drafting your pattern do not add any allowance to it do not add any seam allowance to it you will add your seam allowance on your fabric while cutting i am done marking my waistline my hip line and the full length of the skirt part then after doing that i'll go ahead and connect after connecting i will cut out and this is my back pattern this is the back pattern then using this back pattern i will also cut out my front Now here is the fabric that I'll be using for this gown. This is the fabric that I'm using. It is very fine. It feels like a shirt fabric somehow, a light shirt fabric. Now I will fold my fabric and I will cut out my back. Remember I said that we don't have any zipper at the back. We just have our folded fabric. Now I'll place this fabric on this, uh, I'll place the pattern paper on this fabric and I'll add one inch seam allowance for the hemline and for the seam allowance i want to add one inch i want to have enough allowance this one inch is very okay now this is our back back to the pattern paper the next thing that we are going to do is to extend the hip line the full length so after extending this line we are going to mark our overlap shape the first thing that i'm going to do is that from the waistline i will come down by like eight inches or six inches first of all i marked eight inches then from the center of the pattern paper you are going to cross the line by two inches after marking these eight inches i noticed that the pleats will be low i noticed that it will be low and i don't really like that i had to take it up by two inches that is six inches from the waistline then you will curve you know the curve of this skirt is at the side now i'll go ahead and cut out after cutting this out this is the piece that we use to cut both the right side and the left side of the skirt you know this skirt has two layers we have the inner one and we have the upper part one is on top the pleated one is on top and the plain one is inside first of all i will cut out the plain one this is the fabric that i'll be using for the plain one i'll go ahead and cut out the plain one you can see how i placed my fabric 
the plain one is at the right so this is the place i labeled right and i'll go ahead and add one inch seam allowance around this paper one inch for the hemline one inch for the normal seam allowance then for that overlap area you can just add half an inch or you can still add one inch for folding that overlap area you know this is the inner part of the skirt right so for the top of the skirt we are going to slash and spread it it has pleats i am done using this pattern paper for the inner part of the skirt and you can see that it is plain mark the wrong side so that you not get confused now i'll keep it aside the next thing that we do is that i will start i will start slashing this paper so that i can get the, the top part of this um skirt and i labeled it as the left side you can see where i am slashing from my slashing started from that six inches that i marked earlier before curving my overlap area before curving the open area of the skirt so you start from that six inches or eight inches and then you slash you can see the way i slashed after slashing i'll go ahead and open after marking the line sorry i'll go ahead and slash then after slashing i will spread this pattern paper on my fabric i will spread it on my fabric before cutting out so it depends on how full you want your pleats to be for me i will spread it by four four inches right now i'll go ahead and spread on my fabric now this is the fabric that i will be using i'll place this pattern on it and remember you'll be cutting on the right side of the fabric the plain part of the skirt i cut from the right side of the fabric this is the um pleated part of the skirt and i am cutting from the right side of the fabric so you can see how i um i am spreading this pattern paper and i have four four inches space i want my pleats to be full i have four four inches space between all these pleats four four inches now after doing this i'll go ahead and add one inch seam allowance to the seam allowance to the side seam this is the side seam the full length and then i will add half an inch round that place that i spread there you know you will not slash your fabric you will cut your fabric together the slashing of the paper is just to serve as a guide so after splashing and spreading i will cut out my um fabric and this is the fabric that i have right now i'll go ahead and remove my pattern paper so that we can have a clear view of the skirt now this is the skirt this is the new shape of the top of the skirt then we will start pleating your pleats should be like two two inches because i used four inches to spread so if you are pleating it should be two inches like the depth of each pleat should be two inches if you pleat you can measure if you pleat you can measure So just go ahead and pleat and you can see what I have here. So if you make any mistake, you are free to like redo this until you have gotten the desired shape that you want. So this is the shape that I want and I like it this way and the full length of my skirt is corresponding now. So this is the inner part of the skirt. I'll go ahead and place the two of them together to be sure that I have the shape that I want. You can see what they look like then at this point you can just go ahead and trim some areas let's say you want the curve to be open you want the slit area to be open more you can just go ahead and cut off some pieces just cut off some fabric from it but for me it is okay i just did a little trimming now i'll go ahead and run a stitch at that pleated area so that they will not scatter this is the front of our skirt part and it is very okay i love what i have here now we will start cutting our top this is the back part i want to use this fabric for the back part and i'm using freehand cutting for the top of this gown i don't want to do pattern drafting so for the back this is a shirt right so we will not add any zipper allowance at the back this is the back there is no zipper allowance i'll mark my three inches for the width and i'll mark one inch for the neck depth this is a shirt neck so i marked one inch for the uh, neck depth and after marking this one inch i will take my shoulder measurement my chest line measurement and then i will curve my armhole my shoulder is 15 that is 7.5 if you divide it by two it is 7.5 
and I mark. This is my chest line and this is the half length and allowance. My half length is 16 inches and 1 inch for the joining allowance, half inch for the shoulder that area and half inch for the down part so after marking your half length just add one inch to your bodies so now after marking my chest line i'll go ahead and connect my armhole area this is my armhole cover we use it and connect my armhole and after connecting that remember to mark your one inch for the shoulder slant this is very important so after marking this i'll take my bust measurement plus one inch seam allowance you know we are doing freehand cutting now right so add your seam allowance to your main fabric this is not pattern drafting and after doing that you go ahead and connect so after connecting you will cut out and this is what you are going to cut out the front with the only difference between the back and the front is that the front has an overlap that means if you are folding your fabric the fabric for the front should be wider than the fabric you folded for the back bodies now after cutting i will cut out my front this is the fabric that I have folded out for my front and I'll go ahead and place the back on it. You shift the back bodies to the side of this fabric you folded and make sure you have like 4 inches before the back bodies. Like this front should be 4 inches wider at the center front. This 4 inches should be at the center front. That is for the overlap. Then I'll go ahead and cut out the remaining shape of this uh, back you can see the back i'm just cutting out the remaining shape we have the neckline the shoulder the armhole then after doing this this is a shirt the neck depth for the front will be deeper than the neck depth for the back i will open the center front the center front will be open remember but the center back will be closed now i will come down by three inches for the neckline of the front we need three inches for the neck depth for the front now we'll go ahead and cut out the three inches and please remember to mark the center of your neckline this is where your collar will stop at this place that i marked this chalk these three inches this is where the collar will stop at then from there you will slant your v to your waistline you give it a v shape to your waistline so you go ahead and cut out you will have your normal circle neckline before this v so after that indicate the center of this front too so that you will notch and that is where they will overlap mark the wrong side of the fabric as well then i will place the two of them they are overlapping now and i think they are too closed i had to record the v neckline i had to make my v neckline deeper so i placed them back and i just curved the v neckline a bit i just curved it a bit if you want your bust area to show very well you can deepen this curve now this is what i have at the end of the day and i think i'm okay with this now we'll cut out our sleeve so if you are cutting a shirt sleeve you just cut your normal straight cut sleeve your normal your basic sleeve then you add your band but i am cutting an a-line sleeve so this is the fabric that i have and i folded it into two the full length of my sleeve i want it to be 28 inches or we can make it 27 plus seam allowance that is 28 i marked my line then i'll go ahead and take my round sleeve measurements then after that i'll give it this a-line shape this sleeve that i'm using is just a very simple a-line sleeve i love it i don't want it to have a shirt collar a shirt sleeve sorry i don't want it to have a shirt sleeve now after cutting out our sleeve we will start with the sewing if you want to use a facing for your overlap you can use a facing for the overlap that is for the front but i'll use a buyer so this is the front bodies I will use my bias to turn the neckline though i will suggest using a facing using a facing for this is better and it will give you a very clean finishing so that if the color should fold people will be seeing a very neat fabric inside i am done turning with the bias and i will hold the two of them at the waistline hold the two of them at the waistline please remember so that they will not fall off and then make sure that they merge at the center this is our front skirt 
I'll go ahead and hold this pleat. Just go ahead and hold this pleat area. I am done holding the pleat area. Now I will fold this curved area, like this place that I curved the overlap from. I'll go ahead and hem it and hem the other side as well because if you are walking they will be seeing this area so you need to give it a very neat folding i am done folding that area this is the inner skirt and this is the top of the skirt you can see what i have now and make sure that they align at the side at the waistline and at the full length make sure that they are aligning the two pieces for the front skirt make sure that everything is merging before you hold down with your stitch i am done holding it down with my stitch i'll go ahead and join the top the front the top of the front to the skirt of the front you can see the overlap area and you can see the ruched area like the pleated area then i will go ahead and close the waistline i will join them at the waistline and i'll also repeat the same thing at the back i am done closing at the waistline and this is what i have it is taking shape gradually this is what i have and that is beautiful now i'll keep this aside and i will close my back my back is just a normal body it's no darts you can notice that i did not add any darts to this um, gown you don't need any darts on this for this gown now i'll go ahead and close the waistline that is the one for the back i will use half an inch to close the waistline and this is what i have so after doing this you will take your body measurements at the back of this gown you know the front has a rouge and all that it has gathers pleats and all that overlap so if you want to get your accurate measurements you should take you should take your measurements at the back of the gown this is the back part of this gown i will take my body measurements on it you can see how i'm connecting my lines after taking my body measurements on this i'll go ahead and join it together with the front of the gown but please take your measurements at the back it will help you now this is my front i'll arrange the front part after arranging it i'll place the back on it so when joining i will sew from this back also hem the back part hem the back part before join just go ahead and hem then you join now after joining this gown this is what i have i have not ironed it i will go ahead and take my round neck measurements from the front neckline the front round neckline you measure to the other side of the front neckline and i have 15 inches there 15 inches is very okay that is what i will use to cut out my collar i am not doing any collar tutorial i have a lot of collar tutorial on my channel so you can just check them out so this is the collar i have at the end of the day and i folded my seam allowance i'll go ahead and join this collar to the round neck please i'll link my collar video here i have a lot of these on my channel this is the collar right now i'll go ahead and iron the main gown i'll push my collar make sure that the collar is very neat this is really important and after doing this you will go ahead and join your collar to your gown so this is my gown i am done ironing the next thing that i will do is to trim the armhole this is my armhole after trimming the armhole i will add my collar so if you are sewing this gown like i said remember to use a facing for your front i have my reason you will love it better than using it by now i will fix my collar and i am done fixing the collar of this gown the next thing that i will do is to fix the sleeve so some of you may be asking where the zipper will come in of course we will add a zipper to this dress like i said the zipper will be at the side and you will not have any discomfort wearing it if the zipper is at the side because the top has uh, an overlap the skirt has a ruche and a slit so it will be very easy for you to wear i am done fixing my sleeve i'll go ahead and open one side of this gown especially this side that does not have any gather this is the side that we open i'll open it down to the hip line 
then i'll fix my zipper there of course there's an allowance inside that there's one inch seam allowance so i don't have a red zipper i left this place open the space is open for now this is where i'll fix my zipper at the end of the day this is what we have i hope our gown is beautiful please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so that more tailors can see this video also follow me on instagram at so with ijoma you can make your style request there registration for our shirt class is ongoing you can register for our shirt class of course thank you so much and see you all in my next video i thank you all for your support bye